All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to this installment of the Oneida Lake Arts and Heritage Center's Teaching Artist Series. My name is Nick Fields. This is Dan Pugh. We're going to be playing some songs for you and explaining some aspects of their historical and musical significance. So I hope you enjoy this first tune, The Sunny Side of the Street. Thank you. 
I, you may have noticed, um, I, if you're familiar with my playing, you might be, you probably aren't, I'm usually a good bit more modern. But uh, that we specifically wanted to do in a swing style. Um, in, well, in the early 20th century, uh, a great many of the jazz celebrities were horn men. Ed King Oliver, Buddy Bolden, um, Sidney Bechet, uh, and, and then perhaps most notably, uh, Louis Armstrong. Now, there was a little bit of uh, a bump in the road. In 1942, the Musicians Union struck, and uh, musicians uh, at that time didn't really include singers by definition. So, from 1942 to 1944, there were disputes over royalty payments, and any union member um, was precluded from recording on major labels, leading to the rise of vocalists as being the primary money makers and folk and foci of the genre. Um, so, by that token, I'm actually going to put down this horn. Uh, we're going to do a song that you probably know, and um, if I may be so bold, I'm going to try to do this. Try, because uh, she's a great master. Try to do this in the style of Ella Fitzgerald. This is it. Don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. We're gonna do it rather quickly, and uh, we'll do more on this later. But fast tempos ended up being quite a bit more fashionable as time went on. You see, it, swing j swing music was primarily dance music, and well, even frankly, playing bop and post bop. There is this element of danceability. It has to be there. One of my favorite student, one of my favorite questions to ask my students is, "What instrument do you play?" They look down at their hand, a trumpet. That's not true. Try again. What instrument do you play? So go round and round, until I finally say, "A drum." You play a drum. We all play drums. Your time feel, as a jazz musician is intrinsic to your prowess, your ability to work with others. I know that, that Dan and I spend, have spent thousands of hours working on just that. And if you look around, right, there are maybe oh, a thousand people, I'll just say, maybe more, probably more, who can run scales all day with incredible technique. Yet, there are perhaps a few hundred who routinely make enough money off of music to support themselves and their families. Now the common, and not all of these people, can run scales all day. The common thread between them is that they have exceptionally good rhythm. They do know how to make people dance. So even though fast tempos did become favored, as the music was focused on in a, more for, in a manner more for its own sake and for the expansion of harmonic and rhythmic capability, and, uh, and, and indeed the proliferation of, of radically new ideas about rhythm that uh, came from um, the Afro-Cuban tradition and, and actually nowadays many, many um, far more obtuse pairings. Um, it, uh, it, it, it still has at its heart a rhythmic pulse that needs to be danceable. Now let's burn. Uh, I don't mean to think that ain't got that swing. Hope you guys enjoy it. One, two, one, four, four. Oh, 
segments uh, that we're recording today that I think you'll also find of great value. Once again, I'm Nick Fields, this is Dan Few, and we're here at the Oneida Lake Arts and Heritage Center uh, with their Teaching Artist Series. Very cool programming. Please check out every one of them. Bye-bye. Recording? <laughs> yeah, it's recording. Now, now it's going to stop. And I, and, yep. I was just, Press. I said, I'm, I'm just with gonna, my luck, things 